This is an example of sight distance in a horizontal curve, and it's one of the most common types of sight distance restrictions is vegetation. And I'll show a video of actually driving through the curve, but essentially the area we're looking at is the inside of this curve, and there's some vegetation, some small crepe myrtle trees that are growing directly adjacent to the gutter of the road, and so it's causing a sight distance restriction and drivers intuitively are accounting for this reduction in sight distance so instead of traveling in the inside of the curve they are driving on the outside of the curve so that they have improved their sight distance as they're going through the curve this is a neighborhood street a residential street so it's low traffic volumes and you know generally they're able to compensate for that but when there are uh, two, two vehicles on this two-way street, there are some potential issues with uh, sight distance for seeing the vehicles, in addition to pedestrians and pets and anything other obstruction that could be in the roadway at this location. So we're going to watch a video of a potential obstruction, so a two-foot high uh, stack of buckets, and the video camera is mounted on a bicycle at a height of three and a half feet just to give a perspective of when you can see that potential obstruction through the curve. So when we can actually see the, the, the stack of buckets is located at this point and the point where you can, it's observable is here. So we have about 83 feet of available sight distance at this, in this curve based on the vegetation that's grown up on the inside of the curve. Different times of year, year will give you a different answer. So if we came in the winter and looked at this location without the leaves on the vegetation, we're actually going to see a, a larger number here. We're going to see more available sight distance to see through the curve. So some of these assumptions, stopping sight distance has two components, a reaction distance and a braking distance. And for a 25 mile per hour vehicle, we're going to assume the brake reaction time is two and a half seconds. So it takes two and a half seconds for the driver of the vehicle to recognize that there's some hazard and make the decision that they need to stop. And then a braking distance is based on a deceleration rate of 11.2 feet per second squared. So the reaction distance we come up with is 91.9 feet. The braking distance is 60 feet. So you give us a total stopping sight distance of 151.9 feet. So that's what we'd like to do to accommodate the ability to safely stop through this curve. We actually measured a distance of 83 feet and therefore the available sight distance in this curve in the current configuration is not sufficient. It would be helpful to trim the vegetation back to increase that available sight distance. As I mentioned for the video, uh, consistent with the assumptions from Ashto, the driver's eye height was set at three and a half feet. It was, the camera angle was based on a bicycle and mounting it about three and a half feet above uh, the surface of the road and the stack of buckets was built to to represent an object height of two feet. Now another thing we can do is we can actually calculate for this particular curve how close vegetation can be to the roadway to not restrict uh, sight distance. So we, this formula is going to help us calculate that where we've got m is our our middle ordinate measurement r is our radial distance which is similar to the radius but slightly different it's essentially on a two-lane road half a lane width difference different than the radius and s is the stopping site distance so for our curve i measured the radius of 206 feet we look to Ashto, the green book, and based on the standard assumptions, the stopping site distance is 151.9 feet. And plugging in that radial distance and the stopping site distance, the M value that we have is 13.8 feet. 
and that's essentially what the M represents and it's to the middle of the inside lane M is and so we probably want to subtract off that half of a lane width so that we get from the edge of the road so if you subtract off it's an 11 foot lane so subtract off half that lane width we'll find that about 8.3 feet is the distance from the edge of the road that needs to be clear within this curve in order to provide enough stopping site distance for drivers as they're navigating this roadway so 8.3 feet is that final answer to make sure that we've provided that stopping site distance